Okay, we're still continuing on with Josiah. And I'm still in a state of shock. I don't think I'm ever going to get out of it. All right. What is God benchmarking to in 621 BC? He's benchmarking here. This is a very important year. And you're going to see why. As you can see in the right hand side of the screen, you've got the references to Josiah. In the upper right hand corner, you're seeing the prophecy of him given to Jeroboam. And that is what God is benchmarking next in Isaiah 53 3 at the end of the verse by using the 35 syllables. 35 years after Manasseh um, was restored, which is 56 years after Isaiah writes, and it ties to the fact that, you know, Manasseh ruled for 55 years and in the 56th year he's dead. Okay, 35 years after that is the 18th year of King Josiah. Now, first, Second Kings 22 and 23 all cover this same year. That's what's so important. This is the backdrop to how First Kings 13 2 gets fulfilled, because this is the year in which it gets fulfilled, the 18th year of Josiah. Okay, and this is the backdrop to how it happened. Okay, first of all, the king Josiah, he's 18 now, so he's, he's now an adult. Okay, he's ruling actually in his own name now. Okay, he orders to fix the temple. Okay, he wants the temple fixed. This is what, you know, he's one of the good kings. All right, and he wants the temple fixed, so that's how it starts. Now get this, this, this is a killer. All right. So he's saying, go to Hilkiah and get him, get him the money, okay, and get the house fixed, get the temple fixed, all right? Don't bother to do accounting for the money, you know, because they deal faithfully, okay? So Josiah is showing, you know, what a good guy he is, but he, he's not thinking of himself as a good guy. God is saying this is one of the ways to prove he's a good guy. Now watch this. Then Hilkiah comes to the scribe. I found, get this, they didn't even know. I found a book of the law in the house of the Lord. That means the Bible was sitting unread, unknown, all that time. I have found the book of the law. It was either lost or they forgot about it. They forgot. You see why God would benchmark that? That's kind of important. Okay? So, Shaphan goes to the king and says, Oh, guess what? We did what you told us. And by the way, by the way, Hilkiah has given us this book. <laughs> this book. <laughs> okay, yeah. And when the king hears the words of the book, he tears his clothes. They were all operating on hearsay. Okay, so now, here's what happens. Oh boy, is this a killer. The rest of chapter 22 goes, goes through their reaction. Okay, the king commanded Hilkiah, go inquire of the Lord concerning the words of this book. Because if the book is from God, we're in deep doo-doo. You see that? Okay, so Hilkiah goes to Huldah. See, Israel, this is, this is so true. Israel is so apostate. You gotta go to the women, because the men don't know the law anymore. The men can't talk about it right anymore, so now you go to the woman. The woman still doesn't have any authority, okay? But she gets the word right when the guys got it wrong. That's how bad they were, all right? Now, not all the men got it wrong, but obviously they went to Huldah. She, they knew she got it right. Okay, and what is she? She just keeps the wardrobe. See, her job has no authority. She just keeps the wardrobe. She's, she's like, you know, a housekeeper, clothes keeper, you know, does the dry cleaning. Okay, and she says, tell the man, I, this is, this is the reason for the benchmarking in Isaiah 53, 3. I will bring evil on this place. Even all the words in the book which the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me. See, Isaiah, in Isaiah 53.3, 3, is 
basically benchmarking his syllables to track the years of God's decree about the temple and its going down and being rebuilt and Messiah coming. And he's using Isaiah 53 to do that because it's the panoramic display of history to Messiah. And Moses had done the same thing in Psalm 90. And when I do, you know, do more Psalm 90 videos, I'll show you that. But right now we're focusing on Isaiah because those videos are done. Okay? Isaiah 53, 3 is 35 syllables. It dates from 656 BC when God did his decree against the temple because of Manasseh. And now we're seeing the next benchmark 35 years later of his announcement to Josiah. And that's what's highlighted in blue now. Therefore my wrath burns against them, and it shall not be quenched. In other words, the prophecy I gave to Manasseh is still on. I'm not changing it. The temple's going down. Okay. Now, but to the king of Judah, regarding what you said, because your heart was tender. That's a, a, a Hebrew idiom for wanting God. It really kind of means ravished. Hezekiah used the same phrase. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what I spoke. Therefore, you are not going to have this happen to you. So see, when Isaiah's benchmarking Isaiah 53.3 with the 35 years, he's explaining not only when it happens, okay, in 621 B.C. this decree is given, okay, but he's also explaining why there was another 35 years, because Josiah was still ruling, and he ruled until 609 B.C., which I think you can show here. Well, please, mouse, please work. Please don't go bad yet. Okay, yeah, see? See? God is making this work. 609 B.C. Because the first deportation by Nebuchadnezzar, who wasn't yet in power, he was just about to become, in, or he, he was just coming into power, or his father was, rather. Um, the first deportation is going to be in 606 B.C. All right? During the reign of Jehoiakim. In 606 B.C. is the first deportation by Nebuchadnezzar. All right? So, Josiah... The, the reason why the uh, Israel got time bought for them was due to Josiah. That's what this is saying right here and highlighted in blue in 1 Kings 22, you know, through the end of verse 20. Now, that's not the end of the story, though, for Josiah. We're still in the 18th year, as you're going to see in a minute. Okay, so as a result of him getting that, okay, he gathers everybody goes up to the words of the Lord. He has everybody hear the book because that was the rule. Every seven years you were supposed to hear the Bible and memorize it. That's why this thing about the syllables is so important. They were supposed to count the syllables to know their calendar and to know that they heard it right. Just like I had to make sure I was counting the syllables right. Only I didn't know all this when I was counting the syllables. I was just counting the syllables because in Hebrew it's like one consonant, one verb, and sometimes a second consonant. It's very easy to count the syllables in Hebrew. I don't know how come the Hebrew scholars can't do it. All right? They always debate that you can't know the syllables. Yes, you can. Yeah, just count them. Simple. All right? So he, why? Because you read the word in the hearing. Okay? You're supposed to read it every seven years. That was the rule since Deuteronomy. All right? And then the king, he promises to stand by the covenant. All right? So what does he next do? This is the rest of his 18th year. He commands Hilkiah, get rid of all the idols. Get the Asherah out of God's house. It was, there were still some in there. Okay? And he burns them. This is, this is you know, desecration to show that they're, they're not God. This is the biggest insult to the Asherah worshipers. Okay? And he called prostitutes. Called prostitutes. He gets rid of them. And he brings all the priests out of the city of Judah. He defiled all the high places of the fake gods from Geba to Beersheba. That means high low. Okay? All right. So th this is what he's doing. He's getting rid of all the bad, all the fake god worship. All right? Now, they didn't, they didn't 
quite get all of it done right. Okay, this is like, you know, they didn't learn to go to Jerusalem again. They weren't even eating the Passover at Jerusalem. That's how bad it was.